In this session, we'll look at how we can use AutoCAD to create a custom table for use in InfoWorks 360. On my screen is an InfoWorks site plan that I've been working on recently. As I orbit around this, you can see there are a fair number of custom objects in here. The signs, the menu boards, light poles, and these tables. These objects represent things that are so specific to this project that you're just not going to find them in the InfoWorks library or available online. So, what can you do? Well, if you have AutoCAD, you can actually build these objects yourself, and it's easier than you might think. As an example, we'll take a look at this table. In this case, I knew my project required a table with an umbrella, so I set out with my cell phone camera to take a picture of a similar object. On screen is an example of a picture that I took. I can now use this picture to estimate the rough dimensions needed to model this table. To start the modeling process, we'll jump over to AutoCAD. Over here in AutoCAD, you can see that I've created some geometry ahead of time. Let me mention that normally when I'm modeling something like this, I will just estimate the dimensions as I go. The reason why I created these extra components is just to help me remember some of the dimensions to make sure that my table comes out the same as the way I created it before. Likewise, it's also very helpful when I'm demonstrating something like this to show where the dimensions that I'm using are coming from. So that's why I created the extra content here. Let's split our screen just so we can see that geometry as we work. I'm going to open this in canvas menu on the left. Under viewport configuration list, we'll choose two vertical. That splits the view of the drawing in half. I can then use this view on the right to view dimensions when necessary. And then this view on the left we can use to build the part. Let me also mention that I'm working with the 3D modeling tools. Over here in AutoCAD, I opened the workspace menu and I selected 3D modeling to do that. This is going to be consistent for any AutoCAD based application, map, civil 3D. It's all going to be similar. So uh, now that I've got my 3D tools, I'm going to start by creating the first leg. And I've already generated that geometry, just estimated these. This look very similar to what was in the photograph. I just have a closed polyline here. I would like to extrude this a thickness of 0.5 or half a foot. To do the extrusion, I'd like to see it extrude in 3D. I'll do that by holding the shift key in the mouse wheel and we'll orbit this. I will then come up to the modeling panel. I'll choose the extrude command. I'll select this shape and I'll press enter. And then I will pull this up a height of 0.5. There we go. Now that I've done my extrusion, let's open the visual style menu and I'll flip this to conceptual. And that way my geometry will reflect light to make it a little bit easier to see. All right, next I'd like to fillet the edges. I can do that by going to the solid tab. And then in the solid editing panel, I'll choose fillet edge. I'd like to fillet the edges here of the top and bottom face. Let me choose this edge first. Now that I've chosen the edge, I'll come down and choose radius. We're going to use a common radius of 0.05 for all the parts, just to keep the measurement simple. And then now that I've set my radius, I'm going to choose loop, because I want to apply this fillet to multiple edges. I'll choose that edge again. And AutoCAD says that edge participates in more than one face. Which face are you interested in? You can see it's selected the wrong one here. Let me click next. That's the face I want. I'll choose accept, and then I'll press enter a couple times to complete the command. Perfect. Let's create the fillet on the bottom. I'll press the spacebar to go right back into the command, and I'll grab this bottom edge. It's using the previous fillet, which is perfect. I'll choose loop. Let's pick that edge again, and then I'll click next to grab the bottom face. I'll choose accept, and then I'll hit enter a couple times. So there is my leg. Now, at the risk of destroying the end of the movie, I'm going to array this leg around. No sense in creating four of these manually. Since I'm going to array this, I would like to find the center point of the table. That'll be the point that I array everything around. To find that, I'm going to use a polyline. We'll do that by going to the Home tab here in the Draw panel. I'll launch the Polyline command. We'll draw a polyline from the midpoint of this top edge. I will come down and launch my ortho just to lock that in place you can see that the elevation of this polyline is consistent polylines can only exist at one elevation so i can use that to my advantage that's centered nicely on that face let's hit the space bar we'll go right back into polyline and i'll draw another one from the midpoint of this edge we'll pull this over and create an intersection now if i was to array everything around this intersection i'd have a solid mass here at the top i'd like to be able to pass an umbrella pole down through this table so Let's create a gap. I'm going to use the copy command to do that. I'll just say copy. Let's grab this line, enter, and then I'll just go ahead and pick it up from any point here at the zero elevation, and I'll just pull this over maybe a distance of 0.1. There we go. Let's draw a circle now at that intersection. That'll hold that point for me. There we go. So that's going to represent the center of my table. Let's orbit this a little bit more. Now that I have that created, let's stand this leg up. 
I'll do that by selecting the geometry. And since I'm using a conceptual visual style or a visual style that shows shading, you can see that I have access to these gizmos. And it's currently it's giving me the move gizmo. I'd like to change that. I'll right click on this and I'll choose rotate to get to the rotate gizmo. I will then come over and hover at the center of the circle and the gizmo will snap to the location of my cursor. Let's rotate around the red ribbon or the red axis. And since my ortho is locked, this is easy. I can just pull up and click and that's now standing up. Next, I'd like to move this geometry such that the center of this circle is at the zero, zero coordinate. I like to use the zero, zero coordinate as the insertion point for my table. It makes things a little bit easier when I drop things into InfraWorks later. So let's launch the move command. What do I want to move? P for previous. It's just re-grabbing my previous selection set. Enter. I'd like to pick this up from the center of that circle, and I want to place it to an absolute coordinate. So I'm going to place it to the pound symbol, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. Enter. Perfect. I'll press escape when I'm done here. That's where I want it to be. Now I can go ahead and create a polar array. Here in the modify panel, I'll open the array menu and I'll choose polar array. I would like to array this leg and I'd like to array it around the center of this circle. Now we can come up and adjust the settings. I don't need six items. Let me change this to four and I'll press tab. So it's creating those four items around a 360 degree angle. So that's perfect. Notice that my associativity is turned off. No reason for this to be associative. I'm not going to be editing it later. Four here is just perfect for right now. I'll hit enter. So there are the legs of the table. Next, we will create the table top. Let me come over here and we can see the dimensions I'll be using for that top. Uh, I would also like to draw this top in place. Now there's a bunch of ways we can do this. There is no right or wrong. So long as we all end up with the same thing, I'm going to draw the top using a cylinder because it'll allow me to do quite a bit of the dimensions in one command. I'll do that here in the modeling menu. I'll grab cylinder and I would like to draw that at the midpoint between two points. I apologize that was off screen. So what midpoint do we represent here? I, I want the midpoint between the midpoint of this edge and the midpoint of this edge. So that puts me right at the center of the top of the table. I know this is going to have a diameter. I'll come down and hit diameter. That'll be 3.5. And then I'll pull up. This is going to have a thickness of 0.2. I'll press enter. There we go. So there's my table. Let's create that circle now. We're going to generate the hole that the umbrella pole is going to go through. I'll be doing this with a circle. So let me come over and launch the circle command. I want to draw my circle at the center of this top edge. And I'm being careful here to make sure that I'm grabbing that top face. And the diameter here, we'll choose diameter, is going to be 0.3. Perfect. Now to create the hole, let's go back to the modeling panel and I'll choose the press pull command. Using this tool, I can click inside a closed area and I can pull this out to create an extrusion or I can push it in to create a hole. I'll just push this down and I'll click. Don't even have to put a measurement in there. I'll press escape when I'm done and you can see that creates a hole down through the table. All right, let's fill it the top and bottom edge now. We'll do that by going back to the solid ribbon tab. Under solid editing, I'll choose fillet edge and I'll click this edge. Same fillet as what we had before. Let me hit enter. I'll press the space bar to go back into the command. We'll grab the bottom. Enter, enter. Perfect. All we have left are the seats. Right here, you can see the dimensions that I kind of estimated for the seats. Now I'm going to draw these off to the side and then we'll move them into position. Let me. Go back to a top view here by clicking the top hot spot on the view cube. So I'll just draw these over to the side. Let's do this with a couple circles. I'll create a circle that has a radius of three. And then I'll tap my space bar. We'll go right back into the command. I'll grab another circle here that has a radius of 1.8. And then I'm going to create another circle that's going to represent my insertion point. We'll see what that's used for here in a little bit. Next, it looks like I kind of allowed a 24 degree gap in between the seats. So let's draw a polyline. We'll draw one straight over here from the center to the zero degree direction. We'll draw another one from the center up. And then if I just rotate each of these 12 degrees, I think I'll be good. So we'll just launch rotate this object. We'll rotate it from the center 12 degrees. I'll tap the spacebar to go back into the command. We'll rotate this one from the center negative 12. Now I can use the trim command. We'll just hit the space bar so that everybody becomes a cutting object. And we can use this to cut off everything around that seat. 
Let's join all this geometry together. Here under the Modify panel, I'll launch the Join command and I will select these objects. That creates a nice polyline for me. Now we can fill it these with a radius of 0.1. We'll come back up here, fill it, radius 0.1, and I'll come down and use the polyline option. Since I'm filleting a polyline, I'll select that. There we go, now I've got the rounded edges there. Let's orbit this, and then I can extrude. We'll come up and launch the extrude command. We'll grab this and we'll pull it up a height of 0.2. Now we can fill it the top and bottom edge. Let's go back to the solid ribbon tab and I'll choose fillet edge. We'll hit this edge, loop. We'll go ahead and hit this again. Next, to do that top face, accept, enter, enter. We'll go ahead and take care of the bottom edge, loop. We'll hit that edge again. That one is getting the right face, perfect. We'll hit accept, enter, enter. So there's one seat. And then we can array this now. We'll go back to the home ribbon tab for that. We'll choose polar array. I want to array this seat around the center of that circle, and we'll create four of them. Same as before, I'll hit the tab key. That looks perfect. We can then close the array. So that's nice. I want these to line up with the legs, so let's rotate all of this. We'll rotate those seats around the center here, 45 degrees. Now we can put these in position. I'm going to do that by using the Move command, I will move these seats, and we'll take that circle geometry as well, and we'll move them from the center of this circle, and we'll place them to the center of the circle down here. So now they're perfect, we just need to move them up into position, so let's find out what the height is. I'm going to type ID, this will give me an XYZ coordinate of any point that I click on. I want to find the end point right there. And I can see that has a Z elevation of 1.1762. So we can say move these guys. And I can pick them up from anywhere. We'll just pick a point here. Since my ortho is locked, I can pull up 1.1762. When I hit enter, it's going to pull that into the Z direction, the perfect elevation to sit those seats on top of those legs. So at this point, we can go back to viewport configuration. We can flip this back to single. We've got a nice three-dimensional table. And from here, we can now start working on building out the umbrella. We'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.